following is an introduction to inter integration, interpolation, and curve fitting using Python. First thing we need to do is bring in a couple of uh, library packages, import numpy as np, the plotting packages, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and then uh, percent matplotlib inline because we're using the notebook. And then for integration, we're going to do from scipy.integrate import star, and we're specifically in, interested in the quad function, so we can replace this star with quad if we want. The, the idea of numerical integration um, is we're not talking about the methods, we're just talking about how to use the functions that uh, Python gives us. For integration, suppose we want to numerically integrate the function f of x from x low to x high. The things we need to do are first define the function definition, and then we need to set the, the bounds, x low and x high, and then we integrate it by calling the quad function, where quad takes parameters function, and then the low bound and the high bound, and it returns two values, the, in, the integral and the uh, error. So normally we're most interested in the integral, but it also reports its error. So for example, suppose we want to integrate the function 3x squared plus 1dx from 0 to 1. In this case, if we integrate it analytically, we'll have x cubed plus x from 0 to 1 uh, is equal to 2. Let's integrate it numerically to see if we get the same thing. So first we define the function f of x, return 3x squared plus uh, 1. And then the result i and the error, comma, error equals quad f, comma, 0, comma, 1. So we call it with quad, we pass it the name of the function, here we've named it f, and then our bounds, 0 and 1. And if we wanted to, we could set, you know, x low equals 0, and x high equals 1, and then replace these, x low, x high, and we get the same thing. And then we can print the integral and the error. And in fact, the integral is 2.0 like we expect, and we have a very small value for the error. So pretty straightforward. We just define our function and then call the quad function where we pass the function we're integrating as an argument and x null and x high. There's lots of other parameters that you can fine tune the output and the operation of the function. You can see those with help quad or if you're in IPython, quad uh, question mark. So the next part is to look at interpolation. To get access to the interpolation, we do from scipy.interpolate import star, and we're specifically interested in the interp1d function. So for interpolation, normally what we have is a series of data points at discrete locations, and we want to know what the function looks like in between those uh, data points. So we want to estimate the function, and there may not even be a real function, it might just be discrete data, but we want to estimate what the data would be between the values that were given. We can do this by linearly interpolating between our given function, that is, between any two, uh, between any two points we can draw a straight line, and we can use the equation for the line to find intermediate values uh, of the points. Or we can use a higher order polynomial interpolation uh, to approximate the curve between the data points. So we don't have to use a straight line. We can try to approximate the shape of the curve using the local shape of the data points. The way that we do this is we presume that we have a given set of x data and the corresponding y data. And then we need to create an interpolation function. And to get this function, we call the interp1d function. So the way it looks is, you can call it anything you want, but here I've called it f underscore linear equals interp1d, and then you just give it your x data and your y data. So when I have these, now I have a function that will do the interpolation, and I can call the function anywhere I want. So I can evaluate x anywhere between any of the data that I give it, and I'll get the corresponding y data approximation. So let's look at an example. So suppose my uh, my given data is x given and y given. And the data points, if I plot them, are these discrete points, the blue circles. So that's the given data. And I want to approximate the curve in between. So the exact curve I have for reference is this dotted line. 
but we'll pretend that we don't have that dotted line and we'll only look at it as we compare the interpolation. So let's make a linear interpolation. I'm going to use, um, <clears throat> um, I'm going to create uh, an array called XX, which has just got a thousand data points on my domain, and I'm going to do that because I'm going to interpolate the data at a thousand different points using only these blue dots. Okay. the exact curve, so x, x are the points that I'm solving at, and y, y is uh, just the exact curves. Just, so x, x is uh, just an array of a thousand points, and y, y is the same function that I used for the blue curves, the blue dots, but I just put a lot more points so that I can plot this dotted line. So nothing fancy here. In this first plot, all I'm showing is the, uh, is the raw data points that we're starting with. So now let's interpolate the data. We're, we'll make an array called x underscore i, and here I'm going to interpolate to 100 uniformly spaced points on the domain, but I'm going to approximate between these using a linear uh, function. So the first thing we do is we call interp1d to get a linear function, f linear, and it'll be linear between subsequent pairs of points. So we expect to see a straight line like this and a straight line between those, and a straight line between there. And so we simply give it our x given, y given data. And we had that up here, those are the blue dots. And that returns a function. And then we can evaluate the linearly interpolated data for every x point that we're interested in using the f linear function. So two, once we have the data, x given and y data, we simply First, create a linear interpolation function using our data, and then we evaluate that function at any data points that we're interested in. We can do the same thing if we want a better interpolate. If we want a better interpolant than a linear approximation, we can use a spline it's, uh, called a cubic spline. And for that, we do the same thing, interp1d, x given, y given, but this time we say kind equals cubic. And that'll tell it, don't do a regular function, do a, don't do a linear function, do a cubic spline. And so in this case, I'm calling it I, y i underscore i s for interpolate spline, y underscore i l for interpolate linear, and I simply evaluate my interpolant points using the spline function. And then we can plot it. So here I'm showing the blue dots. The exact curve is given in this dotted line. The linear interpolation is given by the green line, and the spline interpolation is given by the red dashed line. And so you can see that um, in some places the linear interpolation does better, like between these points, and in some places the spline interpolation does better, for example, between these points here. So it's pretty straightforward to use a, a spline. We simply start with given data, we call the interp1d function with our data values and optionally the kind of spline we're going to use and we store that in a function f underscore spline and then we can evaluate the function just like we would evaluate any other function to evaluate intermediate points besides the given data. So that's, um, that's interpolation. Let's look at curve fitting. So curve fitting can be used for interpolation, but also more commonly for approximating a set of data with some approximate mark function. So suppose we're given data and we want to fit a specific function to that data, uh, we would use uh, curve fitting for that. And this is used a lot in fitting uh, measured data to a model function, for example, fitting a kinetic uh, rate law to measured uh, kinetic data. The way that we use this so there's a couple that we'll look at. We'll look at polynomial fits and general curve fits. So for polynomial fits, uh, we use, those are available in NumPy, and we can use np.polyfit. So we give it our data, our x values and our y values, and we tell it the order of the polynomial that we want. So np.polyfit, the x data points, the y data points, and the polynomial order. 
and that will return p, which is just a list of um, polynomial coefficients, where the first coefficient corresponds to the highest power on x. So if I had ax squared plus bx plus c for a second order polynomial, that would be, um, those would be what uh, p would be, a, b, and c. And then once we have p, we can evaluate the polynomial anywhere we want. So we do this to get the polynomial coefficients. And then once we have the polynomial coefficients, we can evaluate the polynomial at any x. And we do that with this np.polyval. Give it the polynomial coefficients, and then which value of x we're evaluating the polynomial at. So the steps are first set your given x and y data like usual, or have them available somewhere, and then get the polyfit object, and then evaluate the polynomial using polyval. So here's an example. I have two arrays, x given and y given, and then xp are just x locations where I'm going to evaluate the polynomial. I have 100 points. I want to fit a third order polynomial to these discrete blue dots that I have. So I do p3 equals np.polyfit, my x given, y given, and a third order polynomial. And then um, my corresponding, the, pol the polynomial evaluated at the x data is just yp equals np.polyval. Give it the polynomial and give it your x data. So two functions here, polyfit to get the polynomial and then evaluate the polynomial using polyval tell it the polynomial coefficients and the points you're interested in it, and it gives you the y, y values. And then we can plot it. So here we're plotting the original data as the dots and the third order polynomial fit as the uh, straight line, as the green uh, line. Um, if we just print P3, then we can see the coefficients. So this would be like A, x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So that's a polynomial. We can do a more general curve fit, including polynomials if we want, by using the curve fit function. Curve underscore fit function is available from scipy.optimize import curve underscore fit or import star. So we saw scipy.optimize when we were using fsolve and here curve underscore fit is another function available in this library. So suppose we want to fit a function like f of x equals a e to the minus bx uh, plus c. Uh, here f is a function of x but has parameters a, b, and c. So when we define the function, like usual, we're operating on functions, we need to define our function. When we define our function, we make it f of x but we add the arg we add arguments for all of the parameters that we're solving for. So in this case, we would write def f of x comma a comma b comma c, return a times uh, e to the minus bx plus c. So we simply define our function with the parameters, but the parameters need to go in the, in the argument list. Then we can get some data. So let's just create some uh, data. And here we do that by 50 data points across the x domain. And then we'll fake some y, some y data by actually evaluating the function with some, with some sample parameters and then adding a little random noise to it so that we can simulate some raw data. So that would be like these blue dots would be maybe data that we measured, some noisy data, and we want to fit that to uh, the green line. So in this case, uh, once we have the function defined, we simply do params comma extras equals curve underscore fit. We give it the function, and we give it the x data and the y data. And then it figures out by itself what the values of the parameters should be, and it stores those parameters in this list called params, this array called params. And it stores some other information in extras, and you can look up what those are if you do help on the curve fit function. So once we have the parameters, a, b, and c, we can print them out, and we get a equals 2.4375, b equals 1.17812, and c is 0.465051, and those are similar to the values that we gave it before we added the noise. Uh, we can also plot the two, plot our original data with points, and um, the curve fit 
data with um, a straight line. So once I have the parameters, then I can evaluate the function using my best parameters. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm plotting x given versus f of x given with the best parameters that I just found. A, which is params 0, B, params 1, C, params 2. And that's it.